Thank you, Reverend Ventura, for that wonderful introduction. And I am truly honored and humbled to be here for the first service of Rising Phoenix. And at this time, I would like to congratulate Ms. Ventura on taking the pastorship of this church for the next while, at least. And we wish her all the best. And I also wish all of you congregants here at this chapel who have stuck together and decided that this is your home. This is what you love and this is what you're going to make into something new and fresh as you go forward in the next months and years to come. And I'd like to start with a short poem by Robert Frost, and it's called The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and long looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then it took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for the passing here had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. Shall I be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence? Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Now, spiritualists are funny lot. We are. Someone said it's akin to herding cats. <laughs> and that's probably a very good analogy for most of us because we all have different ideas about what spiritualism is, and we have different ideas about what people are. But yet we're all the same. Because one of the greatest conditions of spiritualism is that we can accept change. We can accept change within ourselves. We can accept change within other people. And we know that this particular life is but a shorting blink of an eyelash in terms of the history of the universe. We know that the lessons that we learn here in this <coughs> life will carry forward into the next life, and the next life after that, and so on into infinity. So we really have to look at why we're here and what we're trying to do in life. Now the British philosopher Alan Watts had a very good description of the past. He said, I want you to imagine yourself standing on the prow of a boat out in the ocean, looking ahead, water flat as can be, the sun glistening on the surface. And the boat's moving forward. And the prow of the boat is creating a great wake which rolls out behind the boat. And as you stand there and you look at the wake of the boat, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So we can choose to look ahead or we can choose to look back. And when we do look back, we realize that the events of those times helped to shape the people that we are today. The events of the now are the ones that are the important ones. These are the ones that say to us, we have principles that we want to live by. In the United States here and in this chapel, you have nine principles. In the church that I'm a member of, the Spiritualist National Union in England, which is now the eighth largest church in England, has only seven principles given by Emma Harding Britain in 1871. They were adopted by the SNU 
in 1901 and have remained unchanged ever since. And there's great debate about change of the principles. Do we need to modernize them? The older members of the congregation say, well, no. If you try to modernize anything, that means I might not be able to stay because I might not agree with your new wording. I can't let go of the past, which is the present for me, because I have decided that I will live my life according to the principles. Now, change invariably comes. Change becomes us. In the first principle, we believe in an infin infinite intelligence. The English say, the fatherhood of God. Some will say, that should be also added to the, the motherhood of God. Because times have changed. Now, in reality, they're only words. They're expressions of who we are and what we are. But they are not us. Spiritualist, spiritualist churches have welcomed female ministers from time beginning. Other churches have not been able to do that. That does not mean that we're right and they are wrong. What it means is this is our way of expressing ourselves, where we can say to every single person on the planet, our second principle is the brotherhood of man. Again, the male gender, but every single person on this planet, no matter what orientation they are, no matter what race they are, no matter what religion they are, we're all equal. None is any better than the other. And we look at our brothers and sisters who accept no faith and say to them, well, that's your privilege. We believe that we're right because we're a religion that's based on science and truth and the affirmation of the next life. We know that progress, open to every human soul, carries on into the next state. The next state being similar to this state without the physical body. We don't magically go to heaven because we were good. We magically are transported out of our bodies when our time is done into the next state as we were in this state. So there's no better time than the present to stay in the present and decide in your life, have I done enough? Can I do more? Is there something today that I could have done better? Is there something tomorrow that I could think about that will change me to be better than I was before? One of spiritualism's greatest philosophers was a fellow named Andrew Jackson Davis, who was born in Blooming Grove, New York in 1826. And Andrew had about six weeks of formal education in his life, yet through trance gave us 33 volumes of philosophy, the most important of which are the divine principles of nature and the harmonial philosophy. They were transcribed shorthand as he spoke in trance for 15 months in 1847. And he predicted the rise of modern spiritualism through the raps that were heard in Hinesville. Another long story which I won't go into. But I bring up his name because he talks about what he is today. And one of his most famous thoughts is that I'm not the man that I was yesterday. And tomorrow I do not <coughs> intend to be the man that I am today. I hope to be better. And that's what it is for us. We can take our philosophy and our religion down to seven basic premises. We don't need commandments which say, thou shalt not kill. We know that. <coughs> we know 
that to live a good and virtuous life is important. That that is the goal. And we know that often we fail. But if we go back and we say to ourselves, well, if I could have done it just a little bit better, then tomorrow I will be what I want to be. And I don't have to be absolved of my guilt. I have to take that experience and say, that wasn't a mistake. That was a learning experience. Something that, yes, I wanted to do that. Take any topic, anything that you may not have been happy with yourself about. But you had that experience which taught you that it was time for you to change. No matter how glorious the experiment was, people still need to relieve themselves of the guilt that our society has put on us for what we may be. And when we want to change, we come together, we talk to our friends, we talk to the God of our own understanding, and we say, well, show me the way. How can I be more than I was? And for all of you who have come here tonight, I understand this is a larger than usual crowd, you should be proud of yourself for coming to support your hopes, your dreams, your attitudes of what you want to be and what you want this place to be. It's very important. I also understand that this chapel was first formed in 1951, yes. which is one year older than I am. <laughs> a lot of people have come through these doors, a lot of ministers, a lot of speakers. There's a history here. We don't want to live in the past of the history. We want to build upon the future of the history. We want to make it to be the great and proud chapel that it's been in the past. In a new way. In your way. We'll need the contributions from each and every one of you, whether it be opening a door and giving a smile, or coming in and vacuuming the rug, or cleaning the kitchen and the bathrooms, helping wherever it's possible. Because when you're able to give of yourself and you're able to serve in any way possible, you've done your little bit. And you've done it gladly with an open heart because you're helping to create for other people People that may be in these seats 10 years from now, 20 years from now, think about it. You were pioneers of the new future of Rising Phoenix. And be glad in your hearts that you took the time to come and support Reverend Ventura. It's so nice to see you. Thank you for listening. Thank you.